Welcome to Our Conversation, a special program from Channel 21. I'm Todd Hagens. Today, our conversation features Vlada Vladek, founder of Vlada's Seeds of Life and host of the Cooking and Kids program that airs here on Channel 21. Recently, we had an opportunity to talk with Vlada about her organization, the purpose behind Cooking and Kids, and a whole lot more. It is wonderful to have with us Vlada Vladek. Vlada, it is great to see you. Thank you for taking time to join us for our conversation. It's absolutely my pleasure and privilege and I'm so excited to hear that your station is playing a program and that you're receiving a positive feedback from your viewers. So I'm really excited to be here with you today. So introduce yourself to our audience. Who is Vlada Vladek? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, um, I guess uh, I should start by saying I'm an immigrant. Uh, I came from Serbia. And I came to the, from Serbia when I was 19 by myself. I came to States. I currently live in California in a little town called Temecula. Uh, I'm a mother to two children. Uh, and um, I run Airbnb in a wine country. And I also work on my charity called Blood of Seeds of Life. So that's about the summary of me. So talk with us about Vlada Seeds of Life, the organization that you have, and specifically your Cooking and Kids program. What inspired you to create Cooking and Kids? And why do you have such a focus on health and nutrition? Uh, that's a very good question. So um, I'll start with what inspired this uh, initiative. So um, being an immigrant and uh, coming from a, a much different place than America is, uh, once you take a possession of uh, another country, you also take a possession of uh, responsibility. Responsibility for that country comes with it. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, I have left every, everything I had to be part of this country and I am not here simply to create a better life for myself, but to create a better future for um, a lot of young people uh, in, in a world who, are, who dare to dream and who are willing to build a better world. So with that said, uh, deep in my heart, I want to preserve America as a most awesomest country in the world. And this is something, in order to do that, we all need to participate in keeping this country as beautiful and, and giving and open and, and, and strong as it is. So um, to do, in order to ensure the good future for a country, we really have to focus on young people in our country. Uh, and that, when I say young people, um, I mean uh, from their health to their mental health, to their uh, spiritual health, to their um, overall growth. So going back to coming to this country and, and in really living out my American dream, and I truly did, this country has opened up all opportunities to me. I, once I became a mother, I realized that it was my time to give back because now I was raising children in this country and my kids will stay here, my grandkids will be born here. So with that said, one uh, asks itself, you know, what is it that I have to give? And one thing that I'm good at uh, is being with people, a community. Uh, I came from a country where I learned certain skills that today's youth does not have. And I just thought since the cooking shows were so popular, this was a, a great opportunity to incorporate some of the cooking and teach kids healthier lifestyle. Uh, and also through these lessons, bring them back into the, uh, bring out some of the old world skills like growing food, preserving food, um, uh, reaching to community, being part of a bigger picture. So the program started as a cooking program, but as you see, I try to incorporate so many other ingredients into it and to create a really positive and encouraging and open-minded program. And that is my contribution to this country. 
So that's how this whole idea about creating a program that's not just an entertainment, but it's rather a story and it, it has a message, a positive message. I felt that, okay, um, this is something that I could do. And uh, since then I have formed the charity that's now uh, taking over the production of this program. And you can tell from watching Cooking in Kids, it's more, it's about more than just cooking. There, you place an emphasis on education, educating your audiences, and you also have an emphasis on family and the importance of community. Exactly. So my point and the mission of my charity is reconnecting families and communities, uh, particularly here in the United States, but beyond, I mean, generally in the world. I think beside um, processed food and then uh, lack of proper nutrition, we are also facing a lack of a proper media or, or good media or heartfelt media. Our youth is uh, going through a very challenging time right now. Our children are entertained to the point where they are removed from their lives or the lives that they should live. And so, uh, I'm, I'm producing media as well. I mean, I understand the power of a message, but I'm trying to take it back a, a few steps and to incorporate some uh, knowledge or education or to provide uh, information that would be valuable to our generations down the road. So cooking is very much about family. And I would love to encourage families to reconnect with their kids uh, around the dining table. And I, I'm also a very big believer that we need to teach our kids basic, basic living skills. I don't care how advanced we become technologically, kids will forever need to know how to grow their food, how to prepare it, how to store it, uh, how to share it. Because, um, you know, coming from the old world and uh, people from old world are uh, always thinking about what if something happens? And so I'm always believe, thinking, okay, we need to equip our youth to be self-sustainable so that if something big happens and we can face it um, uh, with knowledge and skills that will support our communities. We don't have to depend on big food manufacturers. We can produce food locally. We can have skills that will help us survive and thrive. So with all that said, um, yes, good skills, positive message and reconnecting families and communities is the focus of this program. So you mentioned you live in Temecula, California. So that's in Southern California. And I looked at a map and that's kind of between Los Angeles and San Diego in wine country. So tell us about where you live and how your home inspires uh, your ideas for cooking and kids. So Todd, uh, one of the things, uh, pivotal moments in my life here in America was uh, once I achieved my goals, and I think every young life has its goals and, and ideas of what you want to accomplish. And I think it's very important to have a system that allows young lives to excel and to become successful. But uh, the next moment, I think in every intelligent life should be, what do you do with what you have accomplished? So in my particular situation, uh, I was in a construction company and uh, 10 years ago, my husband passed away. And, um, but the, what I have accomplished to this point, and there was a really uh, important moment in my life to decide how do I proceed and what do I do with the rest of my life, despite the challenges that my family faced after my husband's passing. And the decision was to continue to uh, become successful but not for the sake of uh, accomplishing my personal goals, but to become successful and to pass this success now into the broad community and to basically give that success back or to continue to, to thrive through accomplishments of others. So this is something that I think it's the biggest uh, thing when it comes to, to living in a free country. Uh, living in a free country comes with responsibility. And that responsibility is that you're not just free to make yourself happy. You really should grow into a 
a human being that is fruitful for everybody around. With that said, uh, my little town of Temecula, uh, I have a house here. We did, my husband and I did a lot of construction. And after my husband passed, I decided to turn what I had at that time into a, uh, a working uh, house. If my, my home became a working home. And for many years, what little I could acquire, um, I took very little for my family and the rest went back to America. And so I told my kids, I'm making a decision to invest in our country, in your country, and in a country of your children. So instead of just making money and getting wealthier, now we're gonna make money and give it back. So um, my little my house has been a huge supporter of what I do, and um, for many years, our vacation rental has um, basically what you see produced is uh, supported by our house. And through our house, we host many families, many people. We share our house with a lot of charitable organizations locally uh, for meetings, for gatherings. We organize community uh, gatherings every month at our house. So basically, um, our community is very small. It's cute. People are good and kind, and we have a lot of greats, and everybody's pretty much working together. And with that said, I wish we can transplant that lifestyle and that culture uh, in other communities. And I'm kind of using my program to reflect on how communities could come together and thrive together and, and pass that message and spread it to other communities in America. Now, one of the earlier episodes of Cooking and Kids, you give us a recipe about homemade chicken soup. And I want to let you know that you inspired me. I am not much of a vegetable eater, but you inspired me to try to put some vegetables into a recipe that I call turkey and tater stew. And, and Vlada, in, in the South, we call potatoes taters. So in my turkey and tater stew, I put the parsley and the onions and the carrots and the potatoes in it. And I like to say that you inspired that. Well, that it's, you know, that really, really lands in a most beautiful way on my heart because um, things that we do, I mean, we never know how people will respond or if this will make a difference, but in, we should do it nevertheless. But when, um, when the time comes, like right now, when somebody comes back and says, oh my gosh, you know, because of you, I actually did this, that is just, um, it justifies all the struggles that, uh, you know, you go through to, to do something like this. And I should mention to all of your viewers, uh, I know nothing about production. I know nothing about filming. And when all this started, I hardly knew how to operate computer. So, so to this day, I struggle immensely. And you can see that in my production. And so um, what I'm trying to say here is just because you don't know something, follow your passion and just do it nevertheless. Because one day you might have your thought on the other side of the camera telling you that your work actually make a difference. So uh, thank you, Todd, for those words. It really means a lot to me. One thing about cooking in kids, we know your production is real and we know what you're sharing is real. It's not an overproduced studio production. It, it is real. And I think that is one of the reasons why we enjoy watching it. We are seeing the real Vlada. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's going to become even more real because um, I think in a time where media is altered so much, it is so important to create a message uh, that is that relates to ordinary people. We don't all have to be perfect. We don't all have, we don't have to be surrounded with, with perfection. We don't all have to look good. Uh, production doesn't have to be uh, perfect, but intention should be perfect or at least good. So with that said, uh, all along during all the struggles that I encounter with producing this program, uh, one thing that stood by me is that 
my intention and my intention was to create something that's reliable, relatable and real and simple and something that would leave people with a, a good emotion and something that after you, you finish watching this, you were enriched uh, even for just a granule of sand, but nevertheless, your life was enriched or encouraged or um, you had the, a good feeling you know, after you saw it. So um, thank you, thank you again, guys, for airing it. Thank you for um, saying such a kind things because, God willing, um, my I have made a commitment that as long as I live, I will continue to pr produce and pursue good and positive in human being, and I would like to present that to um, uh, our youth in particular as a reminder of who we were who we are, and in hope to see, to help them understand who we are yet to be. I mean, Todd, I grew up among old people and very few young Americans today have opportunity to grow up in, in the presence of grandparents. So importance of a good story uh, it will, is forever. So uh, with that said, uh, as I age, I hope to become American grandma. And I hope to play the role of an old wise lady that will bring youth and families around my kitchen table and share positive stories and, and encouragement. And obviously teach kids simple skills. You know, for as long as there's humanity, somebody will need to cook. We don't want to be fed by, you know, from the little bags and boxes. So Cooking is important, being together is important, and um, teaching kids these skills, and above all, a skill of being connected and being part and belonging to your family, to your neighborhood, to your community. We have to really work on that. And that's, that's my goal with this program. And as I age, I hope that um, God will give me an opportunity, enough help, so I'm around long enough to to do my part in helping to reconnect our, our country. Now with cooking and kids, you often take us beyond the kitchen. You take us into your community of Temecula. You've taken us to Alaska. You've taken us to the national parks. You've taken us to Sweden and to Serbia. How is that an important element of your program that you go beyond the kitchen with your audiences? Well, the world is getting smaller and smaller. And with that, uh, we, we have to be open-minded because I think uh, we all have a lot to offer and a lot to learn from each other. And that goes on a very uh, micro level to the, to the global level. For instance, in Sweden, we went to one of the Swedish schools to see how they do lunches. I tell you, we can learn a lot from them. And that's, it was very, very unbelievable basically for me. I expected a lot, but I mean, I could not believe what Swedish schools do for their children. Therefore, what government has invested and the, uh, what importance government sees in the well being of their youth. We, uh, I just came back, came back from Turkey when we filmed two more episodes. And that's very much about food and nature and family structure. So we can learn from other societies how they manage to stay connected, how they cook, how they garden, how, they, how their family works, because uh, we never stop learning. And bringing stories of different cultures, it's very important because as I said, the world is getting smaller and we need to we need to be more educated on other people, more understanding, welcoming, uh, more accepting. So I think it's important to keep all those different flavors coming in. It's just like, just like when you're making dish, if you always use the same ingredients, it gets boring. So it's good to bring uh, flavors from Orient or from uh, Mexico or you know, Alaska or Sweden. It just makes everything so much richer. Our conversation with Vlada Vladik continues in just a moment. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. 
Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. We are talking with Vlada Vladek. She is the founder of Vlada Seeds of Life and host of Cooking and Kids that you can see right here on Channel 21. Vlada, you did an episode where you went to Serbia and you featured a young man who is a chef. And one of the delicacies that you cooked was cow's tongue. And you told the audience it, that, hey, I know that you're thinking that this is gross and there's no way I would ever eat this. And you you looked at the camera and said, have you ever eaten a hot dog? So tell us about that episode, because that is an episode that certainly um, remains in my mind. <laughs> yes, uh, it was an interesting episode indeed uh, from many different angles. Uh, I love taking a camera to my country because obviously that's very close to my heart and eating cow's tongue is also very close to my heart. Uh, for your viewers, as disgusting as this will sound, but um, uh, I've, I mean, no, nothing was wasted uh, out of animal and my family grew all our food, everything but vanilla and cinnamon basically. So when you slaughter the animal, you know, anything, everything from blood to um, intestines, to brain, to liver, everything was eaten. But the trick was people had skills to prepare this in such an exceptional way that, you know, to this day, I crave those dishes because they were such, so, so good. So um, doing a cow's tongue, I think that was a, a nice twist to this fancy restaurant which uh, it's located in the middle of an old fortress. It's beautiful setting right by the river Danube. And when I uh, talked to the young chef, he said, you know, what would you like me to make? I said, let's make something that will, that will be such a contrast to the, all this beauty. So he prepared a cow's tongue, which was exceptional. And um, another point of the episode was also focusing on how young this chef was. And I wanted to encourage young people to dream big and expect a lot of themselves. Don't think that, you know, you have to be in your 30s and 40s to become a successful chef. This young man was in his 20s and he was running one of the best restaurants in Serbia. So, you know, between the cow's tongue, which was a little bit shocking, uh, and I wanted to open up the mind of the young viewers and just, I wanted them to think for a moment, you know, would you really eat that? because a lot of them are eating that in hot dogs, in the pâtés, in, in, you know, different foods that we don't even know. And, um, and I think it's good to keep your mind open to it and explore that there are a lot of other foods out there that we think we shouldn't touch. You know, there's a lot more good food in the world than chicken nuggets, trust me. And if, you're, if it's prepared well, and if you're thought to use that food, it's actually quite delicious. What of your more recent episodes focused on the importance of honeybees and you made honey cookies and it's on my list to make Blatta's honey cookies. So tell us about that episode and weren't you afraid to be around all of those bees? Oh my goodness. Uh, was I afraid? Yes. And if you only knew what happened when I lost those bees, uh, I, for the first time I got a high, a bees, and uh, they left the same day and then I found them on a tree the next day. It was horrifying to go and collect, shake the bees for the first time. And I, was, I never did anything like that. But it was um, my passion to do this. You know, when you have passion for something, you figure out the ways to do it. Uh, and the reason I did this episode is um, I think there are so many wonderful hobbies out there for our kids. And I'm, I will do whatever it takes to get kids away from devices. And uh, taking care of animals or being engaged with nature, either trees or gardening or, or tending to insects like bees, it is so enriching. 
not just for for young life, but it's enriching for your community because you are now uh, your bees can pollinate fruit trees in your neighborhood. You can have a wonderful honey to share with your neighbors, and God forbid something happens, you know how to make honey, and honey is good; it will never spoil. So it's a skill that's worth preserving. It's a skill that enriches your life in so on so many levels. And I would, and it's so easy to do it. You can put the box of bees in your backyard. They don't require a whole lot of attention. And I'm thinking so many other families in America can do this as a hobby together. And bees can uh, consume a young life in such a beautiful way. It just to bring the kids out outdoors, uh, teach them about the nature, how bee works, how tree works, and uh, hopefully, uh, not just teach them how to make honey, but also uh, teach them how to leave the devices aside for a minute and just engage with the nature itself. So after wanting to become a beekeeper my whole life this year, I just said, you know what, that's it. I'm going to do it. And although I don't have the skills, I'm going to learn as I go. And, and I did. And I hope to, this message will encourage other families to consider uh, having bees. If you don't, if you can't have chickens, you can always put the bee of, uh, box of bees in, in a corner of your yard. I love, I have a small garden and I love when I see the bees around the tomatoes and the cucumbers and the squash, yes. because that tells me they are doing their job so I can enjoy vegetables down the road. So I, I like to see them in my garden. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And again, uh, they've been around forever and ever and ever. And that world continues to exist the way it did. And it's simply calling onto us. So I hope through this episode um, that people will actually hear the message and say, you know what, that looks like fun. Maybe we can do something like this. Okay. So Cooking in Kids, the entire series, it ran on our television channel last year. And I know that you have produced the programs over several years. So our audience watched your children, Marco and Michaela, grow up in basically a year on television here. So what do they think about their mom being a television host? And did it take a lot of persuasion to get them involved with cooking in kids? Oh, Todd, um, you know, my kids don't think of it uh, twice. It's just what we do. And so our home is open. Uh, we live uh, a bit differently than most families in America do. Um, I come from culture where our doors remained open to almost everybody. And through our business, through Airbnb, that's now even more so. So being open, it's part of what, it's what we do. And uh, on the top of that, uh, giving back is what we do. It's our lifestyle. So I don't think my kids think of me as a TV host. Uh, it's more of moms teaching young other kids how to do what it's, what's important. So it, I don't think they think twice about it. It's, it's a family effort. And they understand that they too need to be involved and give back. And so in addition to our program, I don't know how many of your viewers have checked our website. But in addition to our television program, we have uh, three other programs which, which we run uh, locally. Uh, one is uh, preparing healthy meals for uh, cancer patients, for single struggling moms, and for form, former foster youth. So I work a lot with on local level here. Then we organize these community dinners every month. We open up our home and we provide free dinner to various people in our neighborhood. Uh, people from uh, attorneys to homeless, you know, we have everybody sit at the same table and just dine and c connect. And we also run a program called uh, Little Sprouts, which donates free vegetable and fruit, uh, fruit seeds to community through public library. So for instance, this year, we are going to donate over $220,000 worth in seeds to Southern California communities. So with all these programs that we do, I expect my kids to be involved. It is the lifestyle and the culture of our family. So they are to the point where they don't think twice about it. It just needs to be done. And um, 
I think, again, I was raised in a similar culture. My grandmother, my mother, uh, my family, we opened the door, we live, we give, we, we got engaged. And so that I'm passing that lifestyle onto my kids uh, selfishly sometimes, because ultimately my goal is to enrich my children's life, lives. And I believe that if they embrace this life of giving and involvement, that they will live a happy and content life. And I think that has been a key for me because um, isolation is a terrible thing. And I th we're seeing more and more families being isolated and, uh, and disconnected and there's more depression, there's more anxiety among young people. So I think I purposely keep my kids engaged in what we're doing. And so it has become, I mean, it's just like making a meal. We make an episode or, you know, we host people, we cook, we do. It's just what we do. It's, they don't think twice about it. I wanted to ask you about your children because I have the image of them from the program being kids. And I saw a picture on your Facebook page recently and they're all grown up. So yeah. I wanted to ask you uh, about them. So let's talk about your favorite meal to cook. What is that meal? And what is the favorite meal that you have the recipe available on your website for everybody to enjoy? Hmm. So just last night, I was hosting um, a group of uh, a board of directors. And uh, our latest favorite is our homemade gnocchis. I don't know why is this it's just like you go through certain favorites. This was absolutely delicious. And we did do an episode on the uh, how to make gnocchis. Uh, we had a Jamie who's Italian. She taught us how. And I mean, it's such a simple pasta, but if you nail it with a good sauce and little olive oil and, and basil, oh my goodness, it's to die for. So we've been making gnocchis uh, quite often, actually, in the last a few months. So what is your advice to people who say, I need to eat healthier. I need to be more nutritious in, in my food choices. What advice would you give them to encourage them to adopt a healthier, more nutritious lifestyle? There is so There are so many different advices out there when it comes to eating and living healthy. My message uh, is eat natural and eat homemade as much as, as possible and stay active, get off of the couch, do whatever is there to be done. And if there's nothing to be done in your life, which is almost impossible, go and do something for somebody else. Go, if you need to go clean your neighbor's house, if you have nothing else to do, do not sit still. That is the key to staying healthy. And again, I can give you many advices about healthy eating, but the most important one would be make it, homemade. And we are starting with my program. I'm trying to start from that uh, basic, basic, basic level, because obviously there's so many levels to eating healthy and depends who you talk to. They're going to give you advices about, uh, uh, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that, have more of this and more of that, take a supplement. Basically, eat natural, eat a lot of vegetables, obviously, as much as, as you can, balance this meal and keep moving because your health does not depend so much on food as it does on your on what you feed your mind with and so good balance between what you eat and what you do is the key to a healthy life and above all if what i say what you do i hope that means what you give is is a good balance to life now it is on my to-do list to take a vacation where I travel out west and see all of the parks and the sites of, of the western part of the United States. So when I make it to Southern California, will I be able to stop in and see you in Temecula? Well, as I said, I run an Airbnb and we host thousands and thousands of people. So our home is everybody's home. So yes, definitely, I'll do stop by. Let us know that you're in town, even if you don't stay with us. Uh, Temecula is a cute little place. Uh, we have a number of different wineries. Uh, the lifestyle is, 
it's very interesting. We have a lot of uh, old fashioned living and very modern living, and it's really well balanced. It's a small town, friendly people. So if you are coming west, uh, make sure to stop by. And if you do, make sure to let me know that you're coming. I would love to host you. Vlada, I, I have to share, I, I'm a little bit starstruck to, to have the opportunity to meet you and to talk with you and, and to hear all about what you have going on with your program, Vlada Seeds of Life, and your plans for cooking and kids. So I want to thank you for being a part of our conversation today. And audiences here in Gaston County, North Carolina, will continue to uh, watch your program and see everything that you're doing in Temecula and beyond to encourage a healthy lifestyle and, and to provide uh, great information and great programs for us. Thank you again. Um, I appreciate you uh, airing our program. I wanna say thank you for, to your viewers for watching Cooking and Kids and for watching us today. Uh, if I might leave you with one more message, that would be, um, I wish to ignite all that ordinary citizens in America have, uh, all, the, all our potential to put it together and to be part of creating a healthier and better connected uh, communities in our country. If you share the same passion as I do, uh, please check out my website. Uh, again, I've been doing this uh, out of my humble means for many years, and I'm hoping that other people will join our initiative where ordinary people step together to build something that will benefit all of us. If you have the same passion, uh, join us. I can use your support. Uh, we need people who have talents in editing. I need help because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, filming too, or just maybe pledging a donation. It would mean a lot so that we can ensure the programs like this continue to exist and they continue to enrich families across the country. We hope you enjoyed our conversation with Vlada Vladek and we look forward to bringing more conversations to you in the near future. For Channel 21, I'm Todd Hagens. Thanks so much for watching.